um, in May 2004, um, two men approached a building where I was opening the door. Um, one of them approached me, and as I turned to see, he um, put his hand over my mouth. He grabbed me and took me into the house. In, he took me into the main room. I would say he knew my apartment well. The second man entered and I couldn't see, all I could see was a ring on his finger. Um, the man was speaking poor Bosnian and I think he was from an English spoken area. The other man was also a foreigner. The man that was beating me was speaking English very quick and he was using bad words, he was, he was swearing. I started to, to kick back against them and I, I hit the man who was holding me between the legs and, and, I, and I, I bit him on the finger near to the ring. Um, when I kicked the man, he, he raised his head and his eyes were bloody like an animal. And then he got my head and he, he put it against the wall three times and then kicked me in the stomach. That's the last thing I remember because the stomach kick was so strong. Uh, I began to lose consciousness. He said, I have Salaam from Bush. Cage Prisoners began in 2003, and it was an initiative of a number of Muslim activists who were outraged by what they were beginning to find out about Guantanamo Bay. And the four big pillars of Cage Prisoners' work since then have been work on Guantanamo Bay and the prisoners there and the prisoners who've left, also been on secret detentions throughout the world, also on extrajudicial killings and particularly the new threat of drones to many countries. And fourthly, the worldwide counter-terrorism policies and legislation. Light them all up. Come on, fire. Now, when Obama came to power, the first day he was in power, he signed a paper that said Guantanamo Bay would be closed within a year. And there were many of us who believed that and felt that really we were going to get somewhere with the struggle against the illegality of Guantanamo Bay. Uh, and promptly to close the detention facility at Guantanamo consistent with the national security and foreign policy interests of the United States and the interests of justice, I hereby order. But not only has he not closed it, but there is every possibility that it will be kept open and that some people may be kept indefinitely, completely outside any legal system. Today, there are 171 men in Guantanamo Bay. Those people have been 10 years without any charge or any trial. One of them that we remember particularly here in London is a Saudi national and British resident, Shaka Arma, who has a British wife and children here. This family is among many who've been completely devastated by what's happened to them and what's happened to their fathers, their sons. It's very difficult to talk about what's happened to the families because it's been so devastating and they have had to live so many years without any help except for what's been done by volunteers like cage prisoners. They've been completely disregarded by the system that's taken their men away into Guantanamo Bay. And over these years, there've been literally thousands of renditions and disappearances. And of those people, some have never been found and some have been found dead. In the name of Allah, most compassionate, most merciful. 
the reason I joined the Cage Prisoners organization is because I found shortly after my return from Guantanamo that it was the only, only organization that was highlighting the case of the prisoners of in, in Guantanamo and in the secret detention sites, both of where I had been held. I found myself looking for the resources and the information that was available nowhere else except on this site uh, that had been set up by volunteers including brothers and sisters who cared simply for those people held without charge or trial in the world's most notorious prison. Uh, I found myself also uh, advising the organization and shortly after that became a director of it. Uh, it is a great pleasure and an honor for me to be part of this organization which consists of teams which include former prisoners, their family members and ordinary working and volunteering uh, members of the public. And one of the things that I found is that it uh, commands a great deal of respect within the world of the human rights community and in the world of the ordinary Muslim community and well beyond. Uh, I believe also that it is imperative uh, that this organization continues to do its work. It is the link uh, between the former prisoners, the current prisoners, the family members, uh, the legal teams and the activists all fighting for the rights of those imprisoned uh, in Guantanamo Bay. And I believe that it is very important for ordinary people to support this organization, first through making dua for it, secondly to uh, support it financially, thirdly to ensure that whatever skills a person's have, person has, that they are able to um, give those skills to and present those skills to cage prisoners so that we can better enhance our work and make it count uh, in the place where it needs to be. And finally, so that we can take our voice from the ordinary person to the leaders of the world and tell them that we will no longer tolerate uh, this type of oppression without people uh, standing up through organizations like Cage Prisoners. And finally, while we see that the Arab Spring has uh, springboarded people across the Muslim world and elsewhere to speak out against oppression, we've seen the former Guantanamo prisoners themselves, people who Cage Prisoners have been supporting and have been involved with, are actually involved in leading the revolutions in places like Libya, and Tunisia and elsewhere and we hope that this becomes an example for the world and that they don't simply see the former prisoners as victims rather they see them as people who stood up against great odds and by the will of the Creator were able to overcome them. Cage Prisoners says it gives a voice to the voiceless and that's exactly what it does. Over the years it has uh, shone a light in some very dark corners that have emerged from the war on terror. Of course the opening of Guantanamo more than 10 years ago was the trigger for the emergence of cage prisoners and at that time it was the only NGO in the world that was shining a light on this horrendous human rights abuse. It was the only NGO that was quite vocal in its condemnation and of course now uh, there are literally scores of NGOs, other charities and organizations who are condemning the very existence of Guantanamo. So right from the early days, CAGE was a trailblazer and it still is and it continues to shine light on human rights abuses. Sadly, there are even more, even though the so-called war on terror started by George W. Bush has, um, has since gone, uh, there are still human rights abuses that continue. And as long as there are people who need us, we will be there to try and help in any way we can. However difficult it is, Cage Prisoners never stops fighting for justice for all these people. And when it comes to the people who've been killed by drones, particularly in Pakistan, in Yemen, and in Afghanistan, none of us know how many hundreds of people have been killed, and often we don't even know who they are. These kind of state-sponsored extrajudicial killings are a symptom of the new illegality that Cage Prisoners is completely committed to fighting on every possible front. And although it's been all these years and we have had not many results, Cage Prisoners continues to fight for all these people on all these fronts. The people that Cage Prisoners advocates on behalf of are in need. And we are in need of your support. And that support includes all of the skills 
that you are able to endow to support our work uh, and they are whether you can translate from the various languages of the prisoners that are held and their, and their relatives to be able to transcribe documents uh, that are that tell in detail what these men have suffered whether you are able to have uh, knowledge or have good, uh, good working knowledge um, on social networking media we are lacking in that field we need people who are able to travel uh, to different countries to help interview the former prisoners and their relatives and other people to help investigate we need case workers we need volunteers who can help set up awareness campaigns in the country and around the world we want cage prisoners not just to be a simple name of, of an advocacy or a campaign group we want it to be an idea that spreads around the world so that people understand that you can stand up for your rights even at the height of oppression Light them all up. Bye. 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 Bye.